Hi, this is the Democratic Alliance Labour Report, Sunday the 25th of July 21. All of us were sold on the Rainbow Nation and this fictitious new dawn. Well, it's not all it cuts out to be. The unemployment is terrible. The vaccines are light. The looting has created further problems. Many people are poor, hungry and jobless with no hope for the future. The COVID-19 third wave goes ahead and plunders the poor even more. It's been affecting our whole system. We need something new. We need to push it very, very fast and as much as possible. Unfortunately, the local government elections seem to be postponed. It looks like it's going to come to be despite the fact that the Democratic Alliance has called for these elections to be held. We've had so many by-elections and there have been no problems with them. So I'm not sure what that's all about, but we do know that the ANC doesn't want to take a risk right now by having an election when the people can actually see through them and see what's happened. Like I said, the unemployment situation, the worst in the world. The vaccines, we were probably the worst in the world as well and then the looting on top of it. So you can imagine how the people are feeling and especially how the workers and the poor are feeling. This is Michael Bagram, Democratic Alliance Labour spokesperson, Sunday the 25th of July, 21. We have an unemployment crisis that is getting worse every single day. The looting has left many more unemployed and thousands with a reduced income. The government has not seen its way clear to put together a new financial package. I'm not sure if they can afford it, actually. But governments around the world have come forward and supported the business community who, in turn, could have employment. Small businesses in particular, businesses in the disadvantaged communities. Can you imagine how they are out there in KwaZulu-Natal or in Gauteng, the small disadvantaged communities who have been having the triple whammy? The unemployment, the looting, the bad COVID-19 distribution of vaccines, it all plays on the business community, which in turn doesn't create any employment. The retail and property sector has almost both collapsed. The Property Owners Association said it will take over two years before some shops can even be repaired. Never mind property up and running, but even be repaired. We have had a look at this very carefully within the Democratic Alliance, and we believe that over 150,000 jobs have been affected by this looting. I mean, it's unbelievable. We are still looking now at the public sector wage negotiations. The public sector wage negotiations are trying to force government to give them unbelievable increases. Now, remember, the public sector are earning more, in most cases, than the private sector. It's unbelievable. They don't care about the disadvantage. We've been told that 20 billion rand has happened in terms of the looting. It's been destroyed. That's over 50,000 informal traders have lost their stock and trading stations. They've been destroyed. The retail sector is probably the worst affected. Just look at what the International Labour Organization tells us. They say that often it's this sector, the retail sector, and especially the small retail sector, which is the, the gateway to employment for the informal jobs, for the non-formal employment. They call it the non-standard forms of employment. Most of those businesses are on their knees. Over 40,000 businesses have been affected, and we don't know when they're actually going to be opening, if they're going to open at all. Government has to now consider the basic income grant. And although Tito Mogweni, our finance minister, has called for this, it looks like government can't actually afford it. Over and above that, with us entering into the, the pandemic with the worst unemployment figures in the world, we have to try and somehow accommodate the workforce. I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but it can't be business as usual. There must be a change. And the only change we can really affect as citizens is at the ballot box. We must understand that those that are still, em still employed, they have to be given time off, paid time off or sick leave. 
when they go and get their vaccination. The consolidated direction on occupational health and safety measures and safety in the workplace does require employers to give employees time off to be vaccinated. That's absolutely important. And they might have to recover from the side effects. Some people react badly in the side effects. Businesses have to give them time off for that. An employer must give the employees paid time off against proof of vaccination. So they've got to come and show the proof of vaccination. Normally you get a little card that tells you that you've been vaccinated for both first and second time. An employer at the end of the day will also suffer a bit because people will take time off and it'll be paid time off. But the basic conditions of Employment Act does call for sick leave and if that's been over and done with, if it's been used, then you can put in a claim also to the Occupational Health and Safety and the COIDA legislation to claim over there for any side effects that, that happen. The direction states that the employer must, in accordance with Section 22 of the BCA, place the employees then on sick leave. Once that sick leave has been exhausted, they can give further time off or they can lodge that claim with the compensation fund. If it's mandatory vaccination, and some businesses will have mandatory vaccination, we have discussed that before, then obviously the, the, because of the operational requirements of the employer, they will have to then have a more leeway for the employees. Mandatory vaccination does create a bit of an onus on the employer. Again, there must be a vaccination certificate and of course the employer must take some time back for the employees to recover if they have any side effects. The Disaster Management Act has extended the Employer Relief Fund, the TERS, it has been extended for another month. Vulnerable employees or those with known or disclosed issues or comorbidities can actually claim from the UIF. Obviously they have to be contributors to the UIF and they will be covered from the 16th of March to the 25th of July, 25th of July 21. That's been opened. It's open now. I have checked that out. Specific sectors will be covered. I'm going to check what sectors are covered. Um, unfortunately, we've had a problem with SARS because SARS has registered certain business in a sector which is clearly not the sector that they're in. And even if it's a mistake, the Department of Employment and Labor are refusing to pay out, and it's a whole business to try and change it from one sector to the other. And that I've had reports from numerous businesses across the country. It's unbelievable. We are still writing thousands and thousands of emails on a monthly basis to the acting commissioner of the UIF. It's very sad, but Marsha Bronkost is still seeing my emails. She must be absolutely sick of me by now. The World Bank has suggested that South Africa deepens the employment tax incentive and gives temporary relief even to small businesses that are being affected by the lockdown. They've also suggested, and this is an interesting one, which is from the World Bank, which is very interesting, they've suggested that the South African government relaxes the rules that hinder entrepreneurship, self-employment, micro and small businesses. So now they've stepped in. I've been calling this for this for years now, for at least six years. I've been saying, relax the rules, release small businesses. They are the engine room of job creation. Now the World Bank has called for it. It's about time, but hopefully our government listens. I don't know if they're capable. I don't know if the ANC is capable of listening to anyone. And at the moment they're in such disarray, I'm not sure that they're even reading. We need to scale up programs that provide trading for entrepreneurs and to provide startup grants for businesses. Now, I know there are a lot of people calling for that right now. I don't know if government can afford it, but I know if it was a DA government, that would become a priority. So thank you for listening to me. This is Michael Vagram from the Democratic Alliance, the Labour Report, Sunday the 25th of July, 2021. I appreciate it.